Greetings, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Movies About Music. That's right. It's our podcast.、Mm-hmm. I'd like over a month later. Yeah, it's been like, I want to say, I don't know the exact length of time we've been away,、mm-hmm. but maybe six weeks or something. Yeah, probably. Yeah. So, what happened? A lot of things happened.、Uh, a lot of things did happen.、Mm-hmm. Um, we, we both got super busy. Yeah.、Um, I had two academic papers and a conference I had to do, and then. Started doing some other stuff, and you were working like a, like a whirling dervish. Yeah, I don't know what that means, but yeah, I was、mm-hmm. working like something. Yeah. I think initially there was something that had, like, you had an interview for a university. That was the other thing that、yeah. took a lot of time. So that happened, and then I got really busy、mm-hmm. to the point where, like, right now I'm in front of a condenser microphone,、mm-hmm. and I kind of want to scream. Because and throw things because I have been recording nonstop with no weekends for about a month. Right.、Um, with different engineers and different condenser microphones. And right. And it's funny how, like, it's, it's kind of triggering. You know, I'm seeing this, this pop screen and the microphone, <laughs> and I'm just like, I kind of want to scream. But we're here for fun. Yeah, we're here for fun. Yeah, I'm not here to be evaluated by clients. Right. Right. And so, yeah, and I've got, my, I've got my Jackson boobies on. Mm hmm. I'm ready to go. Right. So there's a little joke for the movie that we just、yes. saw, which、yeah. is called Jack's. Oh, A Star is Born. That's right. A Star、yeah. is Born. This is the 2018 version. Version.、Yeah. We saw the 1976 ish. Yeah. yeah. And, and we talked about it. We talked about it. And we were going to, we promised people that we would get to the more modern version、mm-hmm. of that,、mm-hmm. which is starring Bradley Cooper. Yes. Directed and by Bradley d- directed Cooper. Directed by Bradley Cooper. And really starring Lady Gaga. Right. And they are the latest version of Chris Christopherson and Barbara Streisand.、Mm-hmm. And this film, I think it's important to note that it was based on the scenario, like the script of the 1976 version,、mm. as opposed to the 1950 something and 30、okay. something version.、Okay. So I think those two are different. And the, this is the remake. Yeah. Of the 1976 version. Okay, that makes sense、yeah. because they're strikingly similar、yes. for a different generation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's kind of that's my summary、yeah. to start us off. Yeah. Because I'm sure, I mean, we never know what we're going to talk about.、Mm-hmm. We do all this unscripted, but I'm sure we're going to talk about generational differences. Absolutely. Yes.、Yeah. Which is, wouldn't you agree that that's kind of the thing at play here between these、totally. two movies? Yeah. Yeah, totally. So. I don't know if we want to jump right into that,、um, but I don't know. Just overall, what did you think of the movie? I feel so conflicted about this movie. And I actually talked about this movie when I was、um, a guest on Gino Brand's、uh, podcast,、oh. Liquid Sound. Yeah, yeah. And I, out of the blue, I said something about this movie because、um, there was a line that I quoted about how you see the 12. Notes. I knew I had heard that somewhere、yeah. before. So that was you. That was me with okay. Gino. Okay. And, you know, there were some stellar lines in this movie. I appreciate the performances so much. Yeah,、I、the performances really, were, really, were really good. Like the, the, the performances.、Mm-hmm. And I'm going to get to that later because I'm not even a Lady Gaga fan, but I think she's just such a talent. She's a stellar performer. She is just the, the star of our generation. I feel like. Everything she touches turns to gold. But anyway, you don't agree with that? No, I just don't. I have, I should say that I have absolutely zero opinion on Lady Gaga、mm-hmm. because I don't know anything about her. I've seen her. I think, you know, like, like most things in life these days, we get introduced <laughs> to someone、yes. by seeing something on YouTube.、Uh-huh. And all I can think of is da, de, da, 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 de, da, 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 da. Yeah, that is a very good. I don't even know if I'm doing the that, melody. No,、right. it is. It is. Actually, it sounds like her first album. The, her first album sounded exactly like that. The But there's、thing. a hit song that does that、yeah. annoying. Just Dance. It's、yeah. called Just Dance. Okay. And I found that song、um, unpalatable. Yeah, I don't. Like I said, I'm not a fan. No, it's,、yeah. it's fine if you do. I'm just stating no, my I, own. I don't like that. I don't like that song, nor I、okay. don't like any of her music. So this is,、yeah. this is the problem, you know, when I sort of. I, I tend to be a first impression kind of person、mm-hmm. when it comes to pop music because、mm-hmm. I really love pop music.、Mm-hmm. But I have to hear a song and go, oh, okay.、Mm-hmm. And that's, how, that's what gets me into certain pop bands. But when I hear a first impression of something, I've automatically decided. And that was also the way 
for me with um, Amy Winehouse, mm. uh, the rehab song. Mm-hmm. I just hated that song. Mm. And I've never been able to hear anything else. And I know people call her a genius. Mm. I just, and it's the same thing with Billie Eilish. That first song I heard, I thought was horrifically bad. Mm-hmm. So there's three examples. Um, right. And I'm sure if I dug into these musicians' work, it, uh, it, I think it might... you're touching on something very important that oh, I've sad. been thinking about. Is that um, I don't think I think that a lot of these singers are sort of forced to or pushed into to perform these stupid ass songs and i think that was that topic was touched on this it was movie. very much portrayed in yeah, the movie yeah. all three of those people that you mentioned are great singers in my opinion i think that th- they have exceptional phrasing i think they have their own style i think they are beautiful beautiful talented singers who sing whose hits are they happen to be the stupidest of their songs. Mm-hmm. And they kind of, they're capable of doing much more than that. Mm-hmm. It's just that the songs that are being pushed by the label and mm-hmm. you know, the songs that kind of are become hits are really their stupidest work. Yeah. And, you know, I don't, like I moderately, I can stand, I could totally understand the appeal of these songs. Like, you know, I don't mm-hmm. really enjoy them that much. Like I'm not going to listen to them like, you know, in my own time. But, you know, if it's like, if it comes out, if it comes out in like at a bachelorette party, I might dance to it. And sing along. You know <laughs> sure. that kind of well, thing. Well, I might I too. Think, Not at a bachelorette. But party, I think but... music is consumed at that level only now. Is what I'm mm, trying to yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, true. And I think that's the problem with this industry, and that's why Adele, for example, is a great singer. Yeah. So there's an example of someone yeah. who's a pop singer that mm-hmm. when I first heard that song, I was like, oh, okay, she can sing, yeah. and this is a this is a good song like but i think her songs are all stupid oh okay the 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 rolling in the deep song no i, I, not I that thought song. that was a, i thought that yeah. was a good song that was my again that yeah. was my introduction so i've never had mm-hmm. a bad thought about adele even mm-hmm. though i don't care i don't follow her work right um i i have not had the negative response to her because i heard that song and i thought right. it was a really good song yeah that was that was still good um she started off as a good like a jazz singer like you know kind mm-hmm. of like etta james like you said her first album is oh, sensational amazing. and yeah. I, i'm kind of i'm glad you reminded yeah. me of that. i want to dig into her yeah first album and it was like oh this is wow she could she really knows her shit you mm-hmm. know like she's a cl- you know a classic r&b soul whatever that is singer yeah you know? And then it like the more famous she became, the the flatter her songs got. Like mm-hmm. you know, it's just like I think that happens too. Hello, that was her second hit, right? Or something. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh my god, <sighs> like hello. And then that's what? it's it. Lionel like, Richie. Yeah, and I'm just like, what the <laughs> fuck, man? Why are you making her sing this song? Um, no soul whatsoever. It's just the most the type of shit that gets you know played over and over in a taxi cab in Asia. Yeah, right. And. That's the other thing. I just mm-hmm. want to hit on that. It's the the way I come to hear songs now mm-hmm. also is, I mean, I don't drink anymore, but when I used to drink, you know, uh, I'd be out at nightclubs yeah. and, you know, you'd hear New York by um, Alicia Keys. Yes, yes. Um, yeah. You know, you'd hear, so you'd hear all the, you'd, you'd hear whatever the new hit song is yeah. in Asia. Yeah. And that's how I would get interested in Americans yeah. or I would come oh, to sure. know American songs. Yeah. And I think the biggest hits um, for the past few decades have been the the songs that appeal to people who don't really speak English and who count on the ones and threes. And I think <laughs> I'm serious. It's like that's the that's most... an old. By the way, for those who don't know, that's an old joke of that that Asians tend to clap on the ones and threes. Not just Asians though. Like there's some you know people who just really don't get it. It's, it's a it's a thing in, yeah. in Asia though. But in Asia p- yeah. specifically, yeah. but it's but people who really don't get it yeah. like they they do that. Yeah. And they like songs like that. Yeah, and that's because it's simple yeah. economics. It's yeah. there's there's a lot of people in China for example who are mm-hmm. consumers of music. Right. And it's the same thing with the film industry. It's basically just numbers. Yeah, totally. And so the music has to appeal mm-hmm. to that. Um yeah, I, so why don't you Tell me, you know, tell us a little bit about Lady Gaga, because I don't know much about her. Well, I think Lady Gaga, like like I said, I'm not really a fan. So what I'm go- about to say is, I think, pretty objective. Because if you mm-hmm. talk to a Lady Gaga fan, they will just not be ob- objective. Mm-hmm. But I also don't hate her. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel very neutral yeah. towards Lady Gaga. 
Um, can I can I tell you the one thing I know about her? What is that she she named herself after the yes. Queen song. Yes. Radio and Gaga. you know what's yeah. funny in the, yeah. so Queen, my generation, uh, and then uh, she's there's one scene in this movie where she's wearing a Yes shirt, mm-hmm. and I said, is she wearing a Roger Dean Yes shirt? That's not possible. I would say that that's possible, and I'm about. To I explain. really doubt she's a Yes. I'm fan. about to explain. Okay, okay, why. go ahead. Yeah. So I will give you the floor. So she's really interesting because um, she is like I think a couple of years younger than me. I'm 39, and she surfaced in. 2008 mm-hmm. and i remember what were pe- people were saying about her they were like oh i remember being in a car in somebody's car and he was like oh my god check this out i bought i just bought the cd because back then people were still buying cds mm-hmm. and her name is lady gaga and she's like a cross between christina aguilera and gwen stefani right Mm-hmm. So those were the two top selling like blonde haired artists at the time. And also this was a decade in which mu- music was like the stupidest that it ever was. Mm-hmm. Right. And so compared to the borderline, like just it, it was the stu- imagine the stupidest music was ever like to ever come out, came out in the in the past like two or three years in 2008. And so when I heard Lady Gaga, I was like wow, this is like a step above some of the shit that we've been hearing, you know? So Mm. it was like, okay, I get it. Mm -hmm. So that song was Just Dance. It was a huge hit. Then she had like Paparazzi, that Paparazzi song. I don't know that song. Um, And she performed it at the VMAs or something. And I noticed that her performances were just like wildly good. Like it was like, you know, it was a basic ass pop song and she turned it into like a grand spectacle. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, that you know whatever and then so she like became this dance music like uh gay icon kind of person madonna was jealous of her okay um and she was you know a huge star i think like while i was just like listening to a bunch of jazz lady gaga Mm -hmm. became a huge star and and what year is this would you say this was between 2008 and like 2012 or something okay that was that was that was right at the core time i was in korea and i was listening to a lot of what was i listening to during that time i was listening to a lot of you know i was listening to post-rock and yeah and uh like i was really into an iron and wine um and that kind of Mm -hmm. ilk of music like quiet um acoustic Folk. Yeah, that was another thing that was going on. That was on happening back then. from yeah. t- 2008 to 2012, yeah. yeah. So I was listening to a lot of that kind yeah. of stuff. I was mostly listening to like new jazz. Like, I was getting more into jazz yeah. too, actually, yeah. So that was a huge, for me, that period would be Esperanza Spalding, Gretchen yeah. Carlotto. Like I was listening to a lot of like snarky puppy, you know, that kind of stuff. I don't know that. Um, no. Yeah, a lot of these like jazz school graduates who mm. went on to, you know it's like mm-hmm. i kind of knew them like you know mm-hmm. and they were all around new york i was like going to gigs in like seeing a lot of accent like cornelia street cafe mm-hmm. that's what i was into so i did not listen to lady gaga, lady gaga whatsoever like i didn't you know i wasn't but she kind of grew up uh-huh. you know i mean we grew you know we grew up together yeah. kind of thing and i remember seeing so she was like pop 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 whatever and then she started doing these um, jazz, a jazz album with Tony Bennett. She did like a, you know, a jazz duet mm-hmm. with Tony Bennett, and I was like, oh my god, she could sing jazz! Mm-hmm. Like she say, she sounds like a 1950s singer. And she started acting in American yeah. Horror Story, whatever. I didn't see that either. I didn't either. Apparently, she was okay. For me, when I first started, when I noticed that Lady Gaga was like an exceptional singer and mm-hmm. a performer was when I saw her at some awards show doing a tribute to Julie Andrews, and she sang The Sound of Music. And she was breathtaking. She Mm. was absolutely wonderful. And then after that, I noticed that she could really sing. Like, Mm. I mean, the, the things that she does, like the way she hears music, the way she, you know, just sort of approaches a song Mm -hmm. is deeply rooted in like the classics okay yeah and just such a and and she apparently so you you think she has some knowledge of of music is what you're saying so it turns out that she was like in the east village like singer songwriter scene kind of like regina specter yeah in the east and back in like you know before she became lady gaga and yeah so that would be like yeah 2005 2006 yeah and so she was singing you know playing the piano doing you know these 
gigs where she would be singing and she was well respected like in the mm-hmm. bitter end like she was like kind mm-hmm. of like a singer songwriter person and she knows her shit like mm-hmm. she could really i think she has a lot of knowledge okay of a lot about a lot of music so okay. yes i definitely think that i she has listened to yes so that wasn't Bradley Cooper just throwing the T-shirt on. I him. highly doubt it. I think like Bradley Cooper and his pinky doesn't really know oh, anything geez. about. So we were. <laughs> so the movie kind of opens with um, similar to the 1976. I hope it's 1976, uh, where he's playing a concert, mm-hmm. and there's very fast editing because obviously he can't play guitar. Mm-hmm. I mean, he can play some chords, but he's soloing. Oh my god! And he's like throwing his pinky out like he's drinking a cappuccino. Yeah. And guitarists don't do that. No, but also the whole time you need he that was pinky not fingering the guitar yeah, like, at all. And it just looked horrendously awkward. Yeah, it looked really yeah. for a musician. I mean, but this is one from episode one, you were talking about this. I want to see some authenticity in yeah. the performances, and yeah. I do too, because we're musicians. Yeah. And I thought that that first performance was not very good. I mean, it was one of the worst things I've ever seen. So like, this is this is where like someone like Chris Christopherson, who's a real musician yeah. and a real singer and yeah. also a real actor, is a rare find. Um, I, yeah, I I couldn't buy into Bradley Cooper, the the country rock god who who apparently is known for his guitar playing. Okay, yeah, yeah, because that towards the end they brought yeah. him on as a guitar player for that. Roy Orbison. But he tribute. did not look like he had ever picked up a guitar before. I'm sorry. Like, he did not look You mentioned acquainted. that. Yeah. The, yeah. He, it, he didn't seem to have an intimate relationship with the guitar strapped around him. Yeah. Like, he was just like really, really awkward. But that was, that's the extent of my criticism. Yeah. Other than that, he was fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's Lady Gaga. What okay. did you think of her? My opinion of Lady Gaga is. You know, there's a, there's a thing that we Gen Xers say about Lady Gaga, have, knowing nothing about her. Whenever you look at like a, a video of the band Missing Persons, have you heard of the band Missing Persons? They were a band with Terry Bozio on drums, who is one of my favorite drummers, and he played with Frank Zappa. It's basically a bunch of ex Frank Zappa guys started oh. a pop band. And Dale Bozio, his wife, was the singer. And she was Lady Gaga before Lady Gaga. I mean, she mm-hmm. had Lady Gaga's look. And so people are saying, oh, she just stole Dale Bozio's look. Oh, okay, yeah. I mean, you can look at it later. I don't know I if that's true. I think I heard true. about this. Yeah. yeah. So this is a, you know, there's one of these generational battle mm-hmm. things that goes on. And knowing that she was named after uh, Queen, mm-hmm. uh, or she named herself after Queen. That's And the oh, oh, ah, ah, whatever song... Um, that's my extent, the extent right, of my right. knowledge of her, except that I have seen in passing scrolling, you know, information about music that she has sort of redeemed herself musically and is taken more seriously as a musician now. That being said, I can't think of a single Lady Gaga song that I like. Okay. Um, so I don't know what kind of music. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But I, I think she's, with. but some of the things you've been saying, like, uh, you know, like, um, I think she's trying to, you know, kind of broaden her talents and show herself as a legitimate musician rather than just being a pop singer, which is an interesting echo of this movie, right? which we can get into. But my impressions of her as a singer is I can, I can hear that she can sing. It's just my problem with her generation of singers is everybody sounds like a lesser copy of Whitney Houston. Like mm, okay. everybody is performing Whitney Houston. I think I know what you're saying, but I also don't think that Lady Gaga is one of them. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because it's, it sounds like, I thought that the songs that she was singing were fine mm-hmm. and there was absolutely nothing exceptional about these songs. Mm-hmm. They were very simple chord progressions and there's nothing unpredictable in the melodies at right, all. Right. And her voice, I think she, it's it's interesting listening to her sing because... She'll be in a register mm-hmm. and that sh- that doesn't sound quite right. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, second verse or whatever, or pre-chorus or whatever, she will situate herself in the register that she needs to be, either by changing the octave mm-hmm. or something like that. And then it's like, oh, okay, this is where she's comfortable singing. That is absolutely accurate, yeah. And then, and then what happens is when she pushes her voice, like mm-hmm. at a higher register, there's a timbre to her voice that I don't like. Oh, it's it's okay. There's a, a, a friction... Mm. Um, to her high register that mm. I, I don't particularly care. But when she's singing in that register, she's got a beautiful voice. Mm-hmm. That would be my assessment of her singing. Yeah, I think that's a very assessment. Okay. 
uh, accurate, you know, it's a very fair assessment. Mm-hmm. I don't, that register, that timbre and mm-hmm. that register that you're talking about that bothers you, it doesn't bother me. Okay. I also know how hard it is to... Well, sing. true, but then, like, for example, yeah. it. I mean, it. I don't think it's unfair to compare her to Barbara Streisand mm-hmm. because of the movie. Right. And Barbara Streisand... Barbara Streisand is a machine freak. Yeah, she, yeah. she there, is, there is not a flaw in her voice. No, and it's not freak. that singing is all about having yeah. no flaws. I mean, even there's beautiful singers who, you know, can go off key or push their voice or things like that. But um, Barbara Streisand is is a divine singer. Oh, she is an exceptional, so the, the most annoyingly perfect. <laughs> there's Barbara Streisand and Aretha Franklin. Yeah, I think yeah, I said yeah, this yeah. Yeah, in the last podcast. Mm-hmm. Like, those two were just perfection. Yeah. And there was nothing more than perfection their entire life. Yeah, right. That's true. But then to go to the movie, yeah, I mean, it takes balls for her to take on this role, absolutely, knowing that she's she can't do that, right. And so, but this leads right to the narrative of the film, which is she comes on to sing during his show. Mm-hmm. It's the same with the two movies, right. And she wows the crowd. Mm-hmm. And I bought it with Barbara because mm-hmm. here is an undiscovered gem of a singer who sings like a goddess Mm -hmm. and then lady gaga does this in this film and i don't buy it quite as much although i thought the performance was really good Mm -hmm. and she does have a performative element to her singing Mm -hmm. that is more modern more contemporary i should say um that you can buy it in that sense but on her if we're talking about her voice i don't know that there would be a wild frenzy I, i could see what you're saying yeah i can see what you're saying yeah. I don't think if I didn't know who Gaga was and I heard that, I'd just be like, oh, she's all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. But I could say the same thing about Bradley Cooper's mu- the this character. Well, he's, yeah, he's not a singer, right? Like, yeah, I okay. don't even know if he has a background in singing. I, well, he sounded okay. He sounded okay. But at, like, for me to believe that he is this massive rock star with those kind of songs, with that one note guitar solo, <laughs> I, I don't know yeah. about that either. But I think like... We are supposed to kind of ignore these things. Well, I think with him, you know, yeah. it's interesting, the two styles, because here's the generational element. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like like we hinted before, there's there's kind of a generational divide going on here. That's why I asked you during the movie, how old do you think he is? Mm-hmm. You said like maybe 50. How old do you think she is? You said like maybe 36, something like that. Yeah, I think or the that, characters. Yeah, 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 yeah. The characters. And I and, think he's supposed to be in his forties though. Okay. Yeah. But there is a there is a divide. There's also a a, a difference in style obviously he's mm-hmm. country rock and she is a pop singer yes and but she plays piano mm. so there's there's a difference in these in the styles that they have mm-hmm. which reflects kind of a difference in the two characters and some of these tensions play out in their relationship and i i think it's interesting because it pretty much matches your age and my age mm-hmm. and you know i'm a firmly seated gen xer and mm-hmm. you're a an ex Millennial kind of. I'm an elder millennial. Elder millennial, okay. But so I en- I enjoyed the songs mm-hmm. that he did, and I thought some of the songwriting was good because in that yeah. country rock no, I, kind I, of I style, it, it I thought it was pretty good, and I thought the melodies were good. Mm-hmm. And I I caught a glimpse at Wikipedia, and it looks like uh, Willie Nelson's son oh. did some of the music, so that was interesting. And then there was a nod to Willie when yes. Sam Elliott later says, "I'm managing Willie now." Yeah, so there's these differences in styles. So then her style, it's, yeah, she kind of emerges out of his shadow Mm -hmm. and then develops her own style. But I think one of the problems with the movie is that it's not hidden that her style is kind of crap. I don't think it was her style, though. It was the producer, the manager, the agent or whatever guy who approached her. Yeah, Yeah, so this is an interesting thing. Yeah, we should say that there's a a manager who intercedes Mm -hmm. just as she's about to start her... Well, she sings that performance mm-hmm. in her in his show, mm-hmm. and then this manager intercedes and kind of takes her career. And he's this British asshole. Not that British people are assholes, but he's this British asshole all young right. guy. I don't know if he's A and R, if he's a manager, if he's an agent, if well, he's they, a publicist. They do all of these things. Like people like that, they they wear a lot of different hats, mm-hmm. and they have like they they tend to be pricks. Yeah. Yeah. So he um, kind of swoops in and he starts to shape her career and he's got her working with dancers and things like that. But I think, I mean, this is the, I think one of the interesting points of discussion in the film is, is he bringing out in her what is already in her or is he usurping her uh, 
otherwise more organic rock? I think it's the latter. And I think Do like you? maybe okay. during editing, like they cut out a lot of those conversations, but there was a point where she was having a conversation with him saying like, I don't know if this is really what I want to do. Yeah, and she cuts the dancers in her yeah, show at yeah. one point. Yeah, um, And also the song that she was performing as her hit single was clearly meant to be a stupid song. Like, I don't mm -hmm. think this movie was trying to make, was trying to say that you're talking about the saturday song. night live song yeah yeah so she performs the saturday night live and she play she performs this terrible it was terrible song yeah. and but the thing is when the song ends uh -huh. that saturday night live performance she seems very pleased yeah i mean she's very happy right and so i don't think i think it's a fault of the movie and i think the problems i have with the movie are the problems of i'm sorry to say this because i think bradley cooper's great but i think they're directing problems okay. I, th I think we didn't he didn't really sequence or he didn't really represent mm. uh her character mm -hmm. in a way where we get a real sense of her art i absolutely agree yeah and so we don't really know whether she, what her spirit is right. we don't know what her soul right, is right. It, it so she kind of falls into this but does she love it she seems to be happy with the stardom yeah. but was that intentional though like that that's what i'm wondering i think it's i think it's a poor directing okay because we don't we don't know right. we don't get to know what is the true sense of her mm -hmm. what is her musical heart we mm -hmm. don't really get it mm -hmm. Because she goes along with it, and because she goes along with it, there's the it feels like we're supposed to take that she just wants to be a star, which could be a you know, which could be yeah. true. And if it's true, then I have no real sympathy for her. Mm -hmm. Well, I do because these things can come in waves. People like, especially somebody her age. I'm thinking she's like in her early thirties. Yes. You can want different things, and then you could decide that that's not you. Like you know, it's just. It's not, not everything is like black and white. You don't, like your values are not like constructed. But I think the heart of the person has to come through at some point in the film. Yeah. And it didn't, right? It didn't. For me, this is what I, this was, this is my second viewing of the film. Right. I hadn't seen it before. And I had seen it back in 2018. And when I saw it the second time, it's been four years since I had seen it. And I'm a different person now. I'm married. Mm. Um, and I'm also, I went through a lot during the past four years. Mm -hmm. And during, there's a scene where he is very drunk and he is high. Yeah. And she's about to receive a Grammy Award. And he had already fallen on stage. I think, you know what? I think that was a nod to Fleetwood Mac accepting uh -huh. an award in, sometime in the 70s. And I think Lindsey Buckingham was drunk and he fell down on the steps oh, or something okay. like that. Yeah. Anyway, go on. Um, I was watching that scene, right? And then um, she went to get her award and she did her speech and her husband, like Jackson, was falling on the stage. Mm -hmm. Like he, he had fallen and he was like on the floor. Yeah, on the stage. On as the she's stage, giving her right? acceptance. And then he ends up like, spoiler alert, he ends up peeing on stage, like in his pants. Did he? Yeah, you didn't see that? I didn't see that. You didn't see that? No, I that. Missed is that. a very crucial scene where he, yeah, so he pisses his pants. They could have had a cutaway lights. shot of that. They didn't have a cutaway of that or no, anything. No, they didn't. Like it, he, Clearly, he had pissed his pants. I don't know what you were watching. Was there a cutaway shot, like a close-up? Not a close-up, but it was like you could clearly see the, the piss running down his pants. Like it's, In a long shot? Yeah. Well, if it, then that's poor directing, too. Okay. You have to, if you, okay, maybe it was clear to you. I didn't see it. I didn't notice it. Anyway. Anyway, so that happens, right? Okay. And then, so I knew that even was without happen. the peeing, it's right. a total embarrassment to yeah. her career. Yeah. Right. Um, I, me, let's say I was in that position now at this point of my life, I would not go and accept that award. I would take care of my husband. Yeah. I guarantee you. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. And so that was a very revealing scene for me. Like, yeah. To, and, and I'm not blaming her. I'm not saying that. No, but that's that, good. Like, yeah, that's but, good. But for I me, I see where like, you're going. Yeah. I, at this point it in my life... It says something about the character. Yeah. yeah. At this point in my life, I would never... I wouldn't have mm -hmm. gone up that stage. Period. Mm -hmm. If my husband was like fucking on the floor, drunk and high, obviously on the verge of whatever, mm -hmm. fuck that Grammy. Mm -hmm. I don't need to go on... that. There, there's no contract that says I am obligated to... You know, it's just a yeah. fucking award ceremony. I but she, like, again, it. this is the overwhelming draw and gravity right. of stardom on a yes. person's soul. Yes. And at 
it takes a long time to come to this point mm -hmm. in life. I think mm -hmm. when you have to be a little older, yeah. you have to have suffered some kind of loss. You have to have these experiences to have that those kind of priorities. It took me a long time. Like, yeah, I see what you're saying. And so for my first viewing, I did not really think that. Mm, mm. I was like, oh, why is he, oh my God, like he ruined her moment. Yeah. I think that was yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the overwhelming Interesting. response mm -hmm. towards um, that scene. Mm -hmm. My friends too, they were like, oh, he ruined her moment. And mm -hmm. now I don't see that as ruining her moment. I see it as her having fucked up priorities. Yeah. And so- okay. Interesting. It's a very complex. Yeah, it is complex. Yeah, because yeah, again, this is her. Mo I, mm -hmm. I, I can, I can see the weird thing is she keeps trying to maintain the appearance of mm -hmm. you know she keeps trying to give her pre-prepared speech. Yes, even though he's, yeah. it's time to take your husband yeah, yeah. and walk off. It, the it stage. had been time <laughs> to take away your husband off the stage, like take your husband off the stage. Yeah, that fuck that award. Yeah, so I'm I don't. Saying. Yeah, so yeah. that's 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 a good point. I I all of this kind of adds up to I don't know how to feel about her. I don't know. Who, I don't know what to take away that, from her character. That's exactly what I was thinking yeah. upon my second viewing because I was like. Who cares about that award? You already got that award. You can come and collect it later. Somebody else yeah, can but, get it for but you. But Cece, you're talking about very, a very um, kind of a major pull in, in an artist's life. Totally. Which yeah. is the dream mm -hmm. and the love. Right. So that's that's her. that would be her pull in that moment. Right. And I think you're right that her pull is the pull of the dream. And... You know, if it's if this is a man in her situation in in film, everybody would be okay with that mm -hmm. because that's what men do, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> they the the women along the way get sacrificed mm -hmm. to achieve mm -hmm. you know the greatness of their genius and mm -hmm. things like that. So I don't know if we want to grant some permission to her. But this is the thing, though. She won that Grammy with that stupid ass song. That's what I don't. yes. So and that's so, the other thing. And they have that conversation. He says, "You are fucked." If you are not honest when you're out there. He says that before. Yes. And she doesn't really seem to get it. Yeah. So this, I always, I yeah. realized all of this upon my second viewing. I was yeah. like, so you're so excited about this Grammy for the sake of the Grammy. You're yeah. so excited for this career, for the sake of this career, that you don't even care that this song that you're singing is yeah. like borderline. Like, right. Is <laughs> <laughs> and then it comes to a head when he they have a fight while she's in the bathroom. Right. And he's pissed drunk. Right. And he says some very mean things to her right. that are also very honest. So I guess what I'm trying to say is this is a much more complex movie than I thought it was. Yeah, it is. Because I think there was another layer that I had missed when I was mm -hmm. watching it for the first time. The layer that I had missed was that she did not love herself. She okay. didn't yeah, think yeah, that yeah. she was lovable yeah. at all. And that's why she listened to the producers and she had to appeal to, she had to please everybody. Mm -hmm. And she was, you know, she needed the the validation and yes. the approval much more than she needed to express herself. Yeah, she had little than... tiny moments of individual self-expression, mm -hmm. but she basically went with it. Yeah. And he kind of touches on that. And that bathroom scene when he called, when he says all these mean things yeah. to her that were kind of true. Yeah. She was so hurt because he had told her exactly what she knows about herself. Yeah. But she still didn't get it. Right. But like I said, it takes, these things take yeah, a does. long it time. Does. You're right. And, and it's just, and I'm not criticizing her in any way. I'm just, mm -hmm. I, I just noticed that it's a very complex movie about two people who do not love themselves in different ways. In different ways. Oh, that's good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with you. Yeah, he doesn't respect himself enough to live, to continue living and yeah. to, you know, to be happy. She doesn't love herself enough to believe that people will love her for who she is. Mm -hmm. She can't accept that. She right. needs to, she needs the makeup and the producers, mm -hmm. you know, messing with her song and the dancers and whatever. Right. She needs all that, mm -hmm. right? And... She can't accept that she's not ugly. Right. That that was established at the right. beginning. Mm -hmm. So so she's very like this manager is telling mm -hmm. her she's beautiful. I mean, Bradley Cooper's character does that yeah. too. And he de he believes that she is beautiful. Like and he thinks she's beautiful from the very beginning. Yes. Yeah. But she can't accept that, and she never accepts it. But for and the then, manager, she's only beautiful after she's been yes, made up and yes. changed her hair and things like and that. And I noticed on 
once again, second viewing, that this is all her dad's fault. Her d- <laughs> I'm serious. I'm la- Do you know why I'm laughing? Why? Because her dad is played by fucking Andrew Dice Clay. <laughs> Andrew Dice Clay. Yeah. Of all the casting decisions, uh-huh. you get who in the 1990s distinguished himself for being the biggest asshole of the decade. Right. That's his claim to fame, mm-hmm. is that he's the biggest asshole of a period of, say, 1986 to 1996, and then he disappeared. I wonder why... He's an asshole, and looking at him, I could not not empathize with him being the caring father. I just couldn't. He's not a caring father, is what I noticed. Well, there's scenes where he... Okay, well, go ahead. She thinks that he's a caring father. She doesn't get, till the very end, she doesn't get that this was all her father's fault. Mm. So her father always said that, you know, if you were prettier, you would be a star, blah, blah, Mm. blah, you know, Mm. all that stuff. Um, mom's gone, mm-hmm. whatever. She has major daddy issues. Mm. And Bradley Cooper's character, Jack Jackson Maine, has major mommy issues mm. and daddy issues. Yeah. Like his mother passed away at you know, while giving birth to him. Right. And, you know, whatever. And so he had these are two really broken people yeah. who were never loved, who never felt loved mm-hmm. by their parents or anybody. Mm-hmm. And so that was, I think, and a lot of people like this go into show business. Mm -hmm. A lot of people like this become musicians and actors and whatnot. Yeah, because because music and performance gives you something to feel Mm -hmm. that you don't have to explain. But for her, it was so much more important. This validation was so much more important than like... The actual music, I think. Yeah, that was what I got from yeah. this, the second viewing. Of so this. she's got. To, she, so she's one of. She's she's someone who's got talent, mm-hmm. but then the talent becomes the thing to overcome some of these emotional issues, or maybe that's too simple. I, I don't know about that. Yeah, but, yeah, maybe maybe that's too simple. But yeah, there was some some things that I I noticed. Yeah, that's interesting. While watching it for the second time, that I didn't, that I totally missed. Yeah, the first time. Movies about music. Can we talk about the ending? Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, spoilers for those mm-hmm. who haven't seen it, as always. Mm-hmm. But if you've seen the late 70s version, you know how it ends. I'm glad they didn't do some kind of... She arrives at the house right. just in time to save him from killing himself. Right. That and then, terrible. like, just in time to to save him. Well, just in time for him to hear that she loves him or something yeah, like exactly. that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I thought... I didn't like the way the the death scene in which is kind of a suicide in the original version. I didn't care for the way it was executed. Um, mm-hmm. I think we talked about that. This was even worse. And here's why it was terrible. Mm. What dro- there was a there was a cause to his suicide. Right. Whereas in the first one there wasn't. Mm-hmm. There was kind of a lingering. This is me. This mm-hmm. is who I've always been. Mm-hmm. And. I just can't anymore. Yeah, yeah. But here they have to attribute a cause to the suicide. Yeah. And then that never gets justice. Right. right. And the cause is the asshole manager right. tells him, you know you're going to go back on drugs. You know you're going to go back to drinking. And if you fuck up anything in her career, you know, he kind of threatens him. Yeah. And then he also says, like, she's obviously going to leave you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and instead of standing up and punching him in the fucking face... Mm-hmm. He goes, oh my, he, he has this inward kind right. of draw, right. withdrawal mm-hmm. into himself where he realizes, oh my God, you're right. Mm-hmm. I fucking hated that scene mm-hmm. because then he does right after that kill himself. Yeah, yeah. How stupid is that? Yeah, that is kind of stupid, but it also... Um... It also leaves, it also ends the movie with the manager getting what he wants. Mm-hmm. But that I, I feel like that's life though, you know. Yeah, but in, that's... In real life, that happens a lot. Sure, that's real life, but... Yeah. but I feel like there should be some catharsis from mm-hmm. from the asshole manager. Mm-hmm. There should be something where maybe later there's a there's another mm-hmm. scene or another pair of scenes where she says I don't need you anymore mm-hmm. and she goes and she fucking goes on a country rock tour. That would have been a great ending to the mm-hmm. movie. Mm-hmm. But she stays who she is. Apparently, she stays with the manager. There's no catharsis Mm -hmm. with the manager being an asshole. Because there's no catharsis in it. No, there's always, but there is, I know, but this is a movie and there's catharsis in film. And there (laughs) needs to be, I know, but there needs to be catharsis in film. I, you know, forget this postmodern shit. You know what I was thinking um, as I was watching this movie? I think I hate this story. 
So the thing that I said in Gino's podcast was that I really hated that movie, but I don't hate that movie. I don't know how I feel about it, but mm. I hate it. Now I know what it is. I hate this story for so many reasons. Well, there, there are a lot of reasons. So it, it is a cliche at this point, and now you're making a remake of a cliche. It was mm-hmm. cliche in the late 70s. You know, We had Janis Joplin and, and Jim Morris and Jimi yes. Hendrix in the early 70s. It was a cl- cliche by the late 70s, right? Yes. It's definitely a cliche now because mm-hmm. it's in every fucking movie. Yeah. And so there's that level. Uh-huh. What is it to you about the story that rubs you wrong? Um, well, the cliche aspect, mm-hmm. definitely. But I also feel like, um, I feel like these, there, there's this weird, the, the cliche that I have, the aspect of this cliche that I have a problem with is this idea of this genius, you know, musician who is you know who's the genius or whatever you know yeah. if, if you're an artist if you're a musician or if you're like some sort of artist who is what the first concept that i have a problem with is that success is linear as an artist that you know once you fall down the wagon like you can't you know oh, your career is done and like your has been or whatever it doesn't really work out like that it's whatever but the second aspect of this cliche that i hate is that these people are somehow so weak minded <laughs> and weak in general, and that they have no like they're these one dimensional people who can't really get this sh- get their shit together. So a lot of people like in real life who play music, who are really good at what they do, who used to party, who used to do a lot of bunch bunch of cocaine, who used to be alcoholics, they go to rehab, they get their shit together, they live life, okay? And then you know, there might be another album at some point, like, you know, they keep evolving as people. But this idea that like you, these, the best of them die young because they destroy themselves. I, I'm sick of that narrative. Well, I don't think it's true anymore. I think it was true in the 70s when right. things were different. Um, but I think there's a variety of situations. But you just reminded me, though, yeah. I I don't think this movie works for 2018. At all. Yeah. It, because it's not this anymore. It, it really isn't. And, and it's just... It's not, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah. it doesn't, it feels like a, it feels like, you know, like a, like a science fiction movie or Uh, something uh where the, where the logic doesn't add Uh up. It's just not something for this time because I think everything's so under a microscope, Mm -hmm. like his, you know, his alcoholism would have been a, would have been all over social media. Yeah. Very quickly. Oh, she's with that drunk. Well, the, the latest person to, you know, be like this was, I think, arguably, Amy Winehouse, I think she was yeah. one of the biggest names to have passed away in this, you know, to mm-hmm. join the 27 Club. Yeah, I think she was the last one, right? Well, I'm sure there was somebody after her, but I think Amy Winehouse was like the last. I mean, we've had suicides, but not because of, you know, we've had Chris Cornell and yeah. others. Yeah. But not in this kind of way. I mean, right. they're, they're sort of, these other people are sort of right. at the end, it yeah, feels yeah. like, rather than at yeah. the height yeah. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't a but suicide. But I don't know. Maybe, like, that's, maybe that's him too. I, I don't know. I, yeah. yeah I, I don't know. But like, I just, I'm sick of this narrative. Like, yeah, I'm I guess really so, yeah. sick. Of, I know it happens in real life or whatever, but mm-hmm. I think I'm just really sick of this narrative. Mm-hmm. I, I don't, I love music. Yeah. Obviously you do too. Mm-hmm. A lot of people do, but I don't think that everybody loves music, first of all, because there's a lot of people. I don't think yeah. people do, actually. Yeah. This is something that you and I have talked mm-hmm. about. I don't think that... Well, I don't want to go down that road. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, like, I think people, you know, they... I think genuinely a lot of, you know, pe- there are people out there who like the tabloid aspect of, like, musicians yeah. and whatever. Yeah. I'm not one of those people. And the perf- the, the, the image. Yeah, and, the image, yeah. the performative aspect mm-hmm. of, like, you know, all this stuff. I'm not, I genuinely like the music. I want musicians yeah. to stay alive, like genuinely. And I just don't, I'm sick of this narrative. Yeah. Well, that the other thing is like, I mean, we, I guess we didn't really get into the generational element, but I found myself rooting for him more than her. Um, just yeah, because I have, an, I, I have an attitude of yeah. him more than I have of her. You definitely do. Yeah. yeah. Because I, I do believe in keeping it raw and keeping it humble. And I think the film is aptly named mm-hmm. A Star is Born, not mm-hmm. not A Genius is Born. I don't think anybody's a genius in this film. Mm-mm. But I don't want to, you know, I, I didn't hate this movie. Mm-hmm. I thought it was a well done movie. I mm-hmm. thought there were some directing problems, mm-hmm. some problems with the story development. Well, I thought the acting was stellar. The acting the was stellar. Acting, the acting from both, all, everybody. Yeah. yeah. So I was going to say, yeah, um, maybe we can... 
I don't know if there's any other topics you want to cover in the film, but maybe we can end with some things that we liked about the movie. Yes. Like, what are some things you enjoyed about the movie? I think, um, so the very first scene where they meet, she is singing mm-hmm. La Vie en Rose at a drag bar. Mm-hmm. And um, at some point she does this performative thing, like she steps onto the bar and then like that was, she... That was pretty cool, actually. Yeah, and she gives roses to, you know, the audience and then she ends up like in front of him. Mm-hmm. There's a scene where... She, her she, her face turns towards his There's face. There's a shot yeah. where her and you know the posi- it's it's really nice what they call uh, blocking which mm-hmm. is where the actors go in relation right. to the camera and you know exactly where he is mm-hmm. when it goes from wide shot to closer to closer and then she's there and we know that he's right to mm-hmm. the to the to the left of her. And so when she does that, she does this moment where she turns her head towards mm-hmm. him and she looks straight into the camera and we know exactly where he is and we know that that's him. Yeah. It was a really nicely done sequence of shots. I thought so too. And I really like that scene. Mm-hmm. And I absolutely believed in that moment that he fell in love with her. Yeah, it it's kind of weird. Believable. It's it's almost like um, I was thinking while we were watching, why did he fall in love with her? Um, and I don't know and I don't know that I need to know. I, I can understand why he fell in love. Okay. That moment, from that moment, I could totally understand why he fell in love. Yeah. I think, I think again, this is a generational difference. I think in the in the late 70s movies, he's sitting at a table drunk, mm-hmm. and he sings, sees her sing, and it's just her singing. Mm-hmm. And obviously, she's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I bought it more then, I think. I didn't buy it then. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Here, it's interesting because she is more flamboyant, she's more performative, it's not just her singing, it's this performance element. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I guess I can see it because, you know, there's, she's got a, like a personality to Mm -hmm. her, as well as having a voice. Yeah. But where I think, um, I almost said Bette Midler, um, Barbara Streisand, (laughs) it's, it's the voice, Uh you know, and, you know, her presence on stage. Right. Yeah, I... I, So it's a little more showy for a more showy time, is what I'm saying. I mean, I'm very impressed with Barbara Streisand, but I just, I'm not, I don't find her attractive whatsoever, I guess. I think she's pretty. I think she's attractive, yeah. But I just don't like people like that. It's too much. No, you're thinking too much of the celebrity. You have to think of the character. Yeah, but I just can't. You can't separate Barbara Streisand from that. We talked movie. about this last yeah, time. Yeah, <laughs> I just, I, I just, I was like, there's too much of you, like in this movie. Like, it's, it's too, too much, much. Barb. You said. Yeah, it's too much, and she's too much singing mm-hmm. too many notes. I know she's perfect, but it's like, I get it. Mm-hmm. You don't have to hit all the notes. Yeah of your range yeah. in one song. I don't think Barbara does that. She did at the end song. Yes. But not I'm in the like, in the early song, song she was crazy. more humble. Yeah. yeah. This song is crazy. But she does it. Like she really does it without it being a Mariah Carey thing. No, but she's been doing it for decades and it's like it's like I've had enough of Barbara Streisand, I okay. think, you know. And and I just don't like Barbara Streisand, I think. No, I do. Yeah. I mean, I I I don't know if I like her personality but mm-hmm. i like her voice yeah and i love her voice yeah yeah, yeah. Well, that's I, just what don't I'm like, about. I just don't like barbara streisand and so for me it's like lady gaga was but I, much more likable okay 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 fair enough you know fair enough. so i was like okay i could see you know she and, and she does this cute little i think thing. strangely enough uh-huh. i think because barbara streisand was a was an was an actor as well as a mm-hmm. singer i think that Lady Gaga gave a better performance. Yeah, because she's she was subtle with it. She yeah. was a real person, whereas Barbara Streisand was like, "This is my range. Yeah, this is my acting range, well, and even, this is my singing range." Well, like, <laughs> even when in the scenes with Chris Christopherson, mm-hmm. I thought Chris Christopherson was a better actor, and she was kind of mm-hmm. awkward. Yeah, because it was like, "Look at me. This is me acting. Yeah, I am Barbara Streisand, and I am." That was the whole movie. I'm telling you, that's yeah. why people don't like Barbara Streisand mm-hmm. and people like Lady Gaga. You know? Yeah, but I, yeah, okay, all right. That's I'm. I'll, I stand I'll leave it. By at, this. I'll, yeah. I'll leave, I, I won't. I um, I feel like I'm being too critical of this film because I did like it. I mean, you know, I thought even though I was critical of some of the directing, I thought he gave a sense of, and this is the script writing too, but he gave a sense of the backstory of the character without being obvious, without too much exposition. Yes. You know, we got to, we got to feel the trauma in his life, Mm -hmm. um, you know, perhaps a little bit more than we did of her, Mm -hmm. which is maybe another thing that might be unfair because it is, should be her film, I think. But this story is, has always been very unfair 
towards the the woman. So what is so what is it with the, how are we supposed to deal with the idea of the unrepentant drunk mm -hmm. rock star mm -hmm. and the woman who emerges out of that and becomes more famous than him? How are we, how are we supposed to take that? I so I decided I don't have to take this. I don't want to, you know, this story. You're sucks. tired of this story. Yeah, this yeah. narrative stuff. I think it's interesting. I think it's yeah. interesting in the sense of um, opening questions of, you know, a, a woman having to deal with these kind of tendencies in men, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, through mm -hmm. history, mm -hmm. and then emerging from that. I mm -hmm. mean, because there is kind of a almost like a daddy daughter thing that's yeah, going on that's yeah. not so good, but then also there's the idea of you know, her transcending the situation mm -hmm. and actually yeah. making something of herself and defining her own career. I just think there's an interesting complexity to that. Yeah. So again, I thought the directing was in uneven, but there were some good elements. I thought the performances were great. And Sam Elliott gave a, gave a great performance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought it was a fine film. It's it's like 90% approval on Rotten Tomatoes. I don't know why people are raving about it, but then I sometimes feel out of step. I think it's a movie worthy of criticism. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I think people are raving about it, like I said, because they, they like this kind of thing. Yeah. And I, it they just want to be entertained. Me, yeah. But it also reminded me of what somebody said about Amy Winehouse, was that people love the Brits, he said. He was like, Britain mm -hmm. loves a tragic heroine, mm -hmm. and they will create one if they don't get one naturally meaning like you know the tabloids kind of killed her and mm. all that stuff um oh well, lady diana's too yeah and so and and it that kind of, i was like yeah maybe people kind of like this kind of thing you know this well there's a whole history of yeah. um tragic women in film especially mm -hmm. during the 1970s too 70s and 80s and i think like i'm not one of those people like i think i'm i I don't like it. I, I don't like want to it. See it, and not this story, yeah. not this kind of story. But I do like tragic women. I don't like tragic women. Yeah, I, yeah, it's true. You don't like. Yeah, you, you don't I'm seem to like it. it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think I'm like way too affected. Yeah, I think so. I, I like to feel the pathos. I like to feel the um, the heartbreak and mm. the struggle. I like all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. But yeah, I hear you. Um, anything else? Uh, not about this movie. I think I've covered everything yeah. that I wanted to cover. I think we're probably not going to get another podcast in before we go to the States, are we? Probably not. And I also would like to, I mean, I should have discussed this with you first. No, go ahead. I think that it is time to move on from movies about music to oh, another do topic. do you? Yeah. Okay. And my idea, my other idea was movies about places. As you yeah, we talked about this. Yeah, and I think that it is time to move on from movies about music. I think like our podcast should be a movie review review <laughs> podcast okay. as opposed to a music movie review podcast okay. because I think it's like too niche. Well, what if we just called it movies about? Yeah, I think that's great. And we could do movies about music. We could do movies about places mm -hmm. because there's. I mean, we have a long list. Not that we have to do it. Mm -hmm. But there's there is one particular film that I want to do in September because okay. it's an anniversary. Oh, Nirvana? Not Nirvana, but oh. yes, that's a, that's a teaser. A that's a teaser. Okay. Yeah. But I think we'll probably we're probably I, I tend to put up a pod every two weeks, and I just can't do that anymore. Okay. I'm too busy. Yeah. And it takes a lot of work to do this. Right. But I think we'll go to probably like a monthly thing. Okay. Is that yeah. all right with you? That's totally fine. Okay. So then we'll okay. Then I'm up for that. We can expand yeah. it. I think we should Maybe we could it. like alternate or something. Yeah, we, I think we should alternate. And so we will be going to San Francisco in a couple of weeks. Yeah, we're going to we're going to San Francisco. We're going to be in California, different parts of California for and about I think, three weeks. And we're going to have our families together. Exactly. So we're not a reu not a reuniting, a uniting mm -hmm. of of the Kim and the Bacho families yeah, for, the, for first the first time. time. Yeah, and. I think it's a great opportunity to think about what movie about San Francisco. Yeah, because we're going to have to do our first one about yes. San Francisco. And there are so many. Exactly. And I think that would be fun and meaningful Yeah. when we come back. Right. Yeah. So if you have any ideas for movies about San Francisco, let us know. Yes. Cause I, and also, this is my first time since I was like five years old that I'm going to San Francisco. That's right. And I can't wait to show you all yes, of my stuff. Yes, and you're from San Francisco. That's my hometown. Mm -hmm. So we will probably see you again sometime in late August. Yes. So take care, everybody. Take care. Happy summer. Bye-bye. Under the moonlight I'll sing you a song So you'd magically feel a love that's alone Hopefully we
entertain ourselves All bright with stories Of heroes and poets and sadness and war Of immeasurable pain, unconditional love Movies about music